All right, so now we're going to move on and check the actual blade itself. Super important check. You want to make sure that everything on this blade is how it should be. Otherwise, something could go wrong in fight. And then at that point, you don't have a blade anymore. So this is a super important check. Uh, when we're down here at the tip of the blade, you want to check this tip weight here. There should be two screws that should be secure there. That shouldn't have any looseness there. It's been in a high speed, so it should be very secure. You also want to check this drain hole, just like you do on the tail rotor. Um, you want to make sure that those are free so that if any water gets in there, it can drain out. It won't throw off the weight of the blade itself. The next big thing that we want to check on the blade is uh, for lamination. So we have this leading edge bar that we have right up here on the front. And that's, it connects to the rest of the blade here at this bond line. So this is a super important part that you want to check. You want to run your finger up and down it. You want to make sure that the paint hasn't been eaten away to that bond line. Once it does, it needs to be repainted immediately. You don't want to fly it once that paint does get up to that point. You just want to run your hand up and down and make sure it's smooth and that that paint hasn't gotten too far there. You want to do the same on the bottom as well. We also have a bond line here and you can see a little bit better what happens if that paint does get eaten away and that bond line starts to tear apart. So you have it bonded right here and once that paint gets eaten away you start getting dirt and bugs and air that starts eating away there and eventually this will just fold down like that and at that point you don't have a, a smooth airfoil anymore and this becomes delaminated. So that's super important to check and make sure that that is all secure. You also want to check this trailing edge here, make sure there's no dent, that's all smooth there. And then I like to just take a step back, look at the entire blade as a whole, make sure there's no cracks anywhere up the blade, anything that indicates any obvious kind of wear or damage that, uh, that you can't fly with. Alright, so now we're going to jump up and check everything on the main rotor hub. You're going to have to step up in order to reach all of that stuff. So biggest thing as far as doing this, this cross tube right here is not, uh, it can't handle the weight of being stepped on. It's actually placarded, it says no step, so we can't put any weight on that. This is actually going to be your step right here. So this is where you want to put your foot. So what I like to do is I uh, grab this frame back here, put one foot up here, and then you want to grab the gas cap just to kind of brace yourself. You're not pulling yourself up with the gas cap, but you can just kind of brace yourself, balance yourself using that. And then you just step up on this step here. Once we get up here, you want to check visually and physically just this general condition of this cowling that we have here. I want to make sure there's no dents, any obvious problems there. I want to make sure all these screws are tight, these rivets, you want to check for fretting, anything like that. Um, this pitot tube up here, as you come around the front, you want to make sure that that's clear and unobstructed. If you can, uh, can see the front while you're up here, then you can do that. If not, I can't really reach it. You can step down and actually walk around and check the uh, the front for any bugs, anything like that. And we'll move around, check the other side. Again, just visually and physically, make sure there's no dents, anything like that in there. Then we'll go ahead and move up to our main rotor hub here. We'll start here, we have these control rods. These are what actually transmits our inputs from the controls up to the main rotor hub up here. So you wanna make sure that these are secure. You wanna check all the bolts and nuts and all that here. We have one control rod right here, one control rod over here. You wanna move them up and down, make sure they can move back and forth, but shouldn't have any play up or down. And then you have another control rod over on this other side here that if you can reach it, you definitely want to check that as well. We kind of have to reach your hand around the other side. You also want to check we have our stationary swash plate here. This doesn't rotate with everything. This is what these control rods actually move to transmit our input. So you want to make sure that'll move back and forth a little bit, but it shouldn't have any excessive play in it or anything like that. That's about as much as you want for it to move there. All right, so now we're uh, gonna move to the rotating swash plate here. Just like the stationary swash plate, you wanna check for any excessive play back and forth. It may have a little bit like this, but you don't want it to excessively move back and forth, anything like that. You also wanna check this bolt, or not this bolt, this uh, boot here. You wanna check the top and the middle as well as the bottom here for any grease, anything leaking out of it. If you get any grease leaking out of it, it could uh, indicate a possible bearing failure that may be um, coming up. So you wanna check that. Um, then we'll move over to our pitch change links over here. So you want to, these can move back and forth just like our control rods, but there shouldn't be any play up or down. 
You want to check these bolts at the bottom and at the top. You want to check the torque striping and check that they are tight as well. Um, we want to check that these safety wires are installed. These are important safety wires so that if this pitch link were to fail, it would still stay attached so that you could get the helicopter on the ground. So these are kind of your last resort to hold those pitch links on. You want to come around and check the other side too. Same thing. It should move back and forth but not up or down. Check all the bolts and the torque striping as long as you can reach all that. You can move everything around as, as you need um, in order to check everything as well. Moving our way up, um, you want to check these weights here. These are for balance. It balances with the scissor that we have over here. So you want to make sure that those are secure. Again, torque striping is lined up. So this is the uh, rotating swizzer, or scissor here. Um, you want to make sure the uh, condition of that, that that's tight, all these bolts are secure. This is actually what uh, attaches from our main rotor drive shaft and what turns the rotating swash plane and the uh, pitch links, all that kind of thing. Um, so you want to make sure that that is secure as well. Um, then we'll go ahead and rotate the blades around here a little bit. You also want to check these static stops too as well. Uh, if you can see that, I kind of turned it a little early there. Um, you want to make sure there's no cracking or anything like that. That's what actually, um, when you push up on the blade, that's what actually stops it from being pushed too far down so that it doesn't hit the tail rotor as it uh, spins around. So we'll go ahead and rotate the blades around this way. That way we can uh, check our bolts up here. Now you have a better view of this is our coning hinge here. So you want to go around and check all the bolts around the coning hinge. Make sure those are all secure and all the torque striping lines up on all of those bolts. You also want to check this boot as well. Again, check for any grease, anything leaking out of it, just as this one could indicate a bearing failure that's about to occur. Then we're going to move over to our main rotor bolts here. Alright, so we want to check our uh, coning hinges here. Um, these two are what allow the blades to both move up as a result of lift and, and coning, which we'll cover in other ground school videos, but these bolts are what allows the, uh, the blades to cone. So you want to check those. You have torque striping again on these. That should all line up. They should be tight, not loose at all. We also have cotter pins going through them. You want to make sure that those cotter pins are there and are secure. All right, so this is our main rotor bolt, probably the most important bolt on the, on the helicopter. This is what actually keeps our blades attached to the rest of the helicopter. So you definitely want to check this. Uh, it also allows uh, the blades to flap, so it's called a flapping hinge. So on this you want to, uh, again, you know, make sure it's tight. Check the torque striping as well as the uh, cotter pin, the same as the other bolts. Alright, so once you've checked on this side all the uh, coning hinges and the, the feather hinge or the feather bearing and, uh, or feather bearing and uh, flapping hinge, uh, you want to go ahead and just spin the blades around. Grab either the trailing edge or the leading edge of the blade. Use general pressure to push it around as much as you can. And then once you get it about halfway around, I reach around, grab the other side, and pull it the rest of the way around. And then again, just as we did the other side, feather bearings, check all the nuts, coning hinges, cotter pins, um, torque striping, flapping hinge there. Um, just make sure everything is, is the way it should be as we checked on the other side.